All right, guys. So we're going to kick this off today. It's the sales call. It's Tuesday. So what we're going to do, um, I had an opportunity to kind of go over some of the details from last week. So right now, what we're at the 15th of February. So I'm going off of just following the coattails, uh, what Sean kind of started. We're not going to go too deep because there was enough um, after going through through that recording and kind of listening to the to the examples. I think there's enough for us to kind of go over. I actually I'm glad that came up because there's some things that I want to throw in there in regards to the entire sales funnel, uh, what's going on in that process and kind of identifying it. But not only that, finding opportunities for, for other ways to, to build equity within that funnel, within your business. In other words, uh, what I mean by that, find ways to make money, right? It's like more ways uh, to not only add value to that funnel, but also to, to basically monetize some of that process. So and I think we have, what's up, Marie? What's going on? You still on vacation? Oh, you're good. You're back home. All right. I'm <laughs> home. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so that's basically what we're going to cover right now. Um, not a lot of material. There is no slides. I probably kind of give some tips uh, on some things that were asked on that call from, from last week, but this is going to be more of a mastermind. So I'm going to kind of depend on you guys to kind of drive a little bit of the conversation as well, but I want to get it started. And I want to start it very simple because there's something that stood out um, from last, last week's call that maybe I can help out with or just by, by providing you this. But Sean was going through a drawing. And I think it was you, Bob, that you asked, Sean, have you set this up? Do you have somewhere where, where you have this you, you know, drawn out, right? And, and Sean was like, well, not really. You know, and then he went into the conversation about his current partner kind of has or his past partner has some things going on that's really cool. Um, but what I wanted to give you guys is if you don't know, and this is super simple, some of you guys have more complicated software, but Google Drawings, um, if you're looking for a simple way to create a, a diagram, right, um, and you don't want to spend more money on more software, we actually use Google Drawing, and it's in your, in your Google apps, um, Google Drawing, you can create basically diagrams, you know, as big as we actually create our, our site maps using Google Drawings. And it works out really well. They have all the blocks, they have all the text that you can put in there. So that's one thing that I wanted to kind of bring up on this call, just so you have a tool, because I think one of the things that we get lost, and, and, and I, I'm so happy that he went through the process step by step. And, and Bob, you, you know, congratulations, or a uh, great way to be a, a team player there. But that's how we usually have it. I've been through that process, not necessarily on real estate, but on the development process, on the SEO process, where I'm a visual learner. And if I don't see the diagram, it's hard for me to kind of find all those steps because we're just trying to memorize those steps, right? And one of the things that kind of popped out at me is I've been through that, that process and every time I look at our current process and we try to kind of look, we add another branch to it or whatever, um, those diagrams are what help me find the additional kind of like the missing pieces, the bottlenecks, things like that. So I definitely kind of recommend um, that, that you guys create your, your funnel, right? Using a, some kind of diagram and then go through it a couple times. Uh, the other thing is um, that uh, you're, I think it was you, Bob, and, and it was, cause we we're using you as an example last week. Um, is I was assaulted you, all day. Yeah, you, you were net, you've never been in that, pro, you've never been in that position and yeah. you couldn't answer a lot of those things. So it was funny cause I had just uh, finished watching a documentary on the Titanic. And one of the things that they brought up is kind of a captain of a ship. Usually when, before he kind of signs off, they go through a safety process to basically rehearse if something happens. And in Titanic, they didn't do that. There's a lot of things that happened, right? But it just kind of brought that because I had just gotten done watching that documentary. And in our process, what happens is we go and we start the sales funnel or process to a certain point. And then there's a piece that hasn't been rehearsed, right? Hasn't been talked out, which was, I think that was Sean's point <laughs> that you have to rehearse that piece, that entire piece, regardless if there's an A or B branch to that funnel, you have to create them the ideal situations. That's how I have to bring my, my, my team as well in the SEO and development portions. When we talk about those portions, I mean, I have hands coming up all the time when I'm going through my my team on what if this comes up? And I'm like, I don't want to hear the what ifs. I want to hear the ideal. So there's always going to be exceptions, right? But what you have to create is the ideal situations with all the, the ideal pretty much process in place and rehearse those. 
And then when that exception comes up, you deal with it as you go, but that's always going to be like a one, 2%, maybe, right? Um, so that whole process, hopefully kind of that helps out, but um, that stood out for me, kind of what, listening to that recording last week and watching you guys go through that process. But I'll kind of start with Bob because he was the one in the hot seat and wanted to see, you know, Bob, what can you kind of take away from last week? What can you kind of bring to the table right now? Any questions maybe you can bring uh, to the group here that we can maybe start dissecting? So, so a couple. Um, the first, the Google drawings, is that similar to uh, Visio or something like that? And the, the comment was workflows. So workflows are the, you know, just the different processes. You guys call them funnels. So um, I'm trying to uh, coordinate the terminology between the two of what I'm used to and, and relative conversation. Um, and then building out the workflow, um, taking that and keep breaking it down to the, the what ifs. Those what ifs, uh, we call them branches and sequels. So from one branch, and then you have all your different sequels that come off. And then from each one of those sequels, you can branch and sequel again. So all those different breakdowns, which was, you know, that was very helpful. Uh, and for that particular type of stuff, for me, that I need as a visual learner. But for the most part, I'm a just drive and just keep driving through it until you get to the end normally. But for something like this, you actually have to have all those branches and understand the, the what ifs, you know, if, if it doesn't go here, okay, what's the other opportunity or avenue that I can adjust to or uh, to throw the, the third thing in there, the NLP, how can I reframe it so that it's in my benefit or to get that person on the same page with me so that we're going down the same path? Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Let me kind of throw this in. I'm going to share my screen real quick just so we can get this one off the table because I think this is going to help out some of you guys. So I'm going to share my screen and this is just, uh, I'm inside my, my uh, uh, pretty much my, my, my docs, right? My drive. So all you have to do once you're inside your drive here, and it's, here are the apps, right? And you can go to your drive. Once you're in here, you know, everybody looks a little different. Go to new and then go to more right here. Just hover over more and got drawings right there. And then you can go to town in regards to creating your workflows. So absolutely, you can go here. They have all the different tools, to create that entire thing. Like I said, we create entire um, site maps using this and that makes it so much easier. We also create our own flows, basically our workflows through the processes that we have. Uh, so this is a really good tool here. Let me stop sharing here. All right, and I wanna keep going around, around Robin with people that were here last week, uh, just to see the, the takeaways and people that I saw. So John, John May, um, I know you kind of shared some things on that call and gave some, some feedback, but what, what can you bring to the table from last week? Um, I think for mine is just continuing to branch out. Um, cause I'm doing direct mail was like the main part. So now I'm actually going to do some co-calling with, um, basically, I did direct mail and it was terrible. Uh, like we sent out 6,000 postcards and got two leads to under contract, which is pretty good that we got something under contract. But um, the next part is really going to be stacking data, um, being a little more intentional. So with that, I'm building out a campaign that is um, multi-touch, um, but we're just trying to get, is it the right person, the right data first? Then it drops into a lead, like a lead funnel to where we can actually qualify the lead to see if it goes into follow-up or if it then goes into like a sales funnel. So we're kind of like building that drip out. Um, and I'm trying to build most of that out right now just so I can turn it on <laughs> to start running it and just finding out where all the holes are because there's going to be all kinds because I'm not really good at it <laughs> yet but um, that's just where I'm at um, and then how to pull the information into lead vault and then like making it all jive together um, is just the big thing for me and then doing it manual a couple times then I can actually build out the actual sequence in lead vault or where you know how how it's going to look because I think walking it through manually a few times actually helps um, instead of trying to, because I'll never do it if I just keep theoretically building it. 
Uh, I just got to actually put it in practice at least a few times. So yeah, that's where I'm at is just building those flows and documenting all that out. Gotcha. So, yeah. And that's what that Google draw or any software, right? I was just pr providing kind of a, something to start with, but um, I agree with you. I mean, in any process, I mean, when you document that way, that is huge. Um, so let's keep kind of going around the horn here. Uh, I know uh, Chris, Chris C, you were on that call as well. What, what, uh, what can you bring to the table? Or takeaway? Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I need to, um, I'm still building out some of my workflow processes. Um, what I'm trying to navigate um, is I have two essential businesses. One is the, the flipping and the other is, is real estate. So building out a funnel for each one. Um, the, the marketing is going to be, you know, to look to get, be a cash buyer. Um, but nine times out of 10, they're, they're, they're more likely to be, um, you know, just a regular seller where they, I, I represent them as, as an agent. Um, so it's just kind of building out those two silos. Um, and even though the marketing is for one, you know, on the real estate side, there's a lot of follow-up because they're oftentimes not ready to do anything right away. So it's just, you know, uh, building that out and then making sure that I have the appropriate follow-ups. Gotcha. Yeah, and then uh, obviously the simple way, the simple kind of like answer or for all of us, it should be a staff follow-up, right? But the actual process behind it is what it gets hard. hard. So absolutely, great, yep. uh, great share on there. Uh, Keith. I got your message. I got I got the silo stuff ready for you, uh, so no worries. But let's talk about last week's call for the sales call and see what that what what we got from you. I don't. I actually wasn't on that call, Roger. I, don't I, I didn't see. I didn't see your. I couldn't remember if I saw you on the recording. Or not. That's why. But uh, we talked about process. We're still gonna put you a little bit on the hot seat here. Um, sure. So some of the stuff that was discussed, uh, Bob would know best. He was the one on the hot seat last last week. But the big question was. Um, do you feel like you have a sales process in place, right? And what Sean was kind of getting at is, do you have the entire process documented from A to Z? No, no, we do not. We do not have a visual like flow chart, so to speak, of that process set. right now. And this is not an excuse because um, I don't believe in making excuses. Um, just where we are with our business and, and the stage that we're at as, as a new business, um, it's, it's been a matter of prioritizing, um, and everything's important. Everything's important. Um, and that is a huge process of, of having that, that funnel in place, um, and having everything be coherent in, in our website, you know, just the, like Sean said, in one of his, I don't remember, but you know, you're. Um, your website is a store. You're facilitating the buying process, and I love that. So, um, yeah, it's all it all makes sense. It's clear as a bell in my mind, but we have not um, documented that in writing yet. Got it. Perfect. So that's one of the things that probably uh, at on up. Oh, look at that! What do you got here? Got some some charts going. <laughs> oh boy, John. Uh, so that's basically what it comes down to, right? It's like, just so you guys are prepped for some upcoming upcoming uh, uh, calls on the sales calls here with Sean, as he comes back from the Grand Canyon, gets everything going. Um, I'm probably going to be kind of like, uh, like like the the hype, the hype right here call <laughs> just to kind of get the conversation going. But come to the call next week with some kind of idea of a flow. Um, I have some ideas of what he's going to bring to the table. We've been studying some things. Um, on the marketing side, just that we can implement on the real estate side as well. So there's going to be some cool kind of ideas, but it, it's, it's going to work better if you do come with some kind of process, but I'm going to jump over to Gene and, uh, Gene, I can't remember if you were on that recording or not from last week, but, um, if not, I, I mean, what can, uh, what, are, what, what can you get from like that process? Do you guys have a, pro actually, yeah, you guys were on that call. Now I remember, um, what did you get from last week? Um, I thought it was, uh, hopefully you can hear me. I thought it was fine. Um, I like to hit the way he broke down the, the marketing funnel. I guess we, we follow that process. We just haven't actually written it out like um, flow chart wise, but that's kind of like what we do where like we'll get a call and we have our own internal screening where we get a lead and then we, we kind of like vet that lead to make sure it's somebody that's qualified. And then we do our due diligence process. So we kind of like, we do have our own funnel that we use, 
but it was nothing that we actually sat down and said, let's draw it out or anything like that. So, um, for example, like let's say a uh, cold lead comes in, we'll um, go back and forth screening the lead, make sure the person's really interested, and then we'll do our due diligence. We have the due diligence process where we're looking at it, doing the analysis, desktop analysis. Then we'll make an offer. If then uh, if that offer gets submitted, then we have uh, the next step would be we get in touch with our uh, real estate lawyer or any, anybody that we all, all of our contacts. We get the ball rolling. We have our contractor go out there, take a look at it, and uh, we have uh, we get proof of funds. We get everything in line up until the point where we finally close on the property and then we move into. By the time we close on it, we've already got the contractor engaged. We've got timeline set, scope of work. And so we're ready to actually get it rolling unless there's something that's holding us up, like let's say getting um, uh, permits from the city. Usually that's that's what we have to deal with here. You know, a lot of times, especially now, um, everything is really backed up. So getting permits takes some time. So we have to factor in an additional couple months, you know, unfortunately. But yeah, um, it's something where we've never actually, I, I think we have at some point, but we've never actually made it like an official process where we know we kind of know what we have to do because we through, through trial and error, you know, we've gone through that. I think you bring up a, actually a good point. Everybody's going to have a little bit of a different process based on your market. Um, so that's one of the things that makes this unique uh, where we can have this kind of a standardized kind of you guys through the call from last week. <laughs> I was looking at it and it's like just another another asset that, you know, top results REI toolbox can create. To, to provide a starting point, right? So I saw that kind of as a need. So I'm kind of, I have that in the back of my head. But one of the questions I want to ask Gene, because uh, I, I, I spent a little bit of time with Gene uh, over, over uh, a, a past weekend where we did our mastermind, um, the Inner Lion, um, Unleash the Inner Lion event. And I mean, you, met, you, you shared something, Gene, that kind of goes along with this in your corporate life, right? It's like where you dominated a market, actually multiple markets you and your partner, right? And there was a, a piece of that that was a sales process. It had to be, right? So, I mean, just with that, it, it kind of shows how important that is to be in sync and have that process down to really be able to kind of dominate a, a market or anything in, in, in general. But um, that was kind of a takeaway that I took from you out of that event and coming into this, listening to the recording. I'm like, man, that's, that's you. And I see that with Sean. I'm a little fortunate to have Sean as a business partner because I'm really good at creating kind of like the, 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 the actual products and all the process within the products, but the sales process, that's where he kind of strives and, and kind of gets all this stuff in order to, to the T like super, super detailed. Um, so anyway, I'll kind of keep going here because we got Marie. I know Marie was on for a little bit. She almost got kicked off the call last week, but she stayed in. She stayed I, I stayed listening. I put my, I shut off my video so that I didn't get in trouble, but I listened. Right. Cause that's when Bob was in the hot seat and he want to know like, what's this, what's this, what's this, like what happens when you get on the call with a seller? And Bob's like, I have to try and get a deal. And he was like, okay, no, break that shit down. Um, but one so, of the things, yeah. Marie, because one of the things that I want to kind of say before you get started is Liz and Marie, right? So Liz said something that you were like really good at. So this was kind of a great question for you. So I want to kind of hear it. Maybe you can school us and run the call well, for a little bit. No, there. I, Just but what, what you do. I love that she said that. Okay. But this is where I struggle. So I'm really, really good at making flow charts and like I, my engineer brain goes crazy and I can write a process and a system but actually following through and making sure that that system is implemented is not necessarily my strong suit. So like, you know, with me and Liz specifically, we'll sit down, I'll brainstorm it out. We'll whiteboard it out. We'll go through the whole process, but then um, keeping ourselves accountable to actually follow that process has been a little bit of a struggle for us. Um, so I know that that's just something that we have to work on to make sure that we are doing it to that level because you know even to like what i think came up with bob like when liz gets on the phone with the seller sometimes i feel like she gets so excited she wants to go straight for the for the kill right like straight for the deal and it's like no you gotta back off and just be like i need to just bet you first right like gene just said first we just make sure that they're actually a viable lead 
and then have the follow-up call or whatever. So that just at the beginning of the call even just stood out to me of, you know, we both kind of get inside our own heads because we have so much information and so many options that we can give people that we try and just kind of, we kind of have like diary of the mouth and put too much out there, I think, in the beginning, rather than follow our own process, even though we've talked about a process. So that was my big takeaway um, from the call was just document it and then actually stick to it. I think one of the key things you just you just said, you can sit and with your engineer mind, you can I can do the same thing, build the workflow out, find all the branches and sequels and figure it all out. But as you're on the call, you're like, I don't have to go that route. I'm going this route <laughs> and get to the same end state. So, yeah. Uh, OK, note to self. I, I appreciate that. That was that was spot on. Yeah, I think that was one of the things to your just reiterating on that one that Sean kind of put. It's like you have to identify if it's going to be a 10 minute call or a 30 minute call. I remember you guys talking about that. It's like it, it can't be, you know, 10 minutes and then you go for an hour. Um, so because it, it throws off your process. Right. So you have to have that completely documented. But I think uh, as a, as a, a trend or kind of like a commonality between all of us here. Um, documentation is going to be huge. So I'll kind of report back to Sean. This is something we want to work on. This is probably something we should bring to the table at this call uh, in future calls and maybe some training on how to create it, maybe even start a template um, on what that looks like. And then you guys fill in the blank from there. Uh, so that's something that I'm going to go ahead and kind of bring up uh, to Sean that we can create. But I do want to kind of, kind of switch gears a little bit. And, you know, since I am on the call, I want to kind of give you guys a little bit of my side um, of input of what you can add to that funnel, right? Because there's multiple things that maybe sometimes we miss because it's overwhelming to just create the simple sales funnel, just to get from A to Z, just to get that, that thing. But in between and every step, there's always an opportunity to branch off to other opportunities. And what I mean by that, um, I broke this down on these opportunities into four uh, categories. Um, but I'll start with the first one here. And the first one is just building the list, right? And a lot of times we, we kind of look at like, how can we add value or equity to our company? Or wh what are we doing in this process? Because that person that calls or opts in, they might not buy the house, they might not sell their house, they might not go through, forward with whatever you're offering, right? But if they opted in, you're building that list. So that list needs to be a big, big priority for you guys in regards to building it out because there's going to be multiple things in the future that we can do and hit them with other types of marketing for other purposes, right? So one of the things that I want to stress is that list to kind of nail down, kind of collect that list. And I think with Lead Vault, it's made it so much easier to really kind of implement a lot of these things. And then the other thing that we have is one we kind of been kind of uh, beating down here, which is process, right? So that process, I don't want to kind of let that go. I'm going to make sure that we continue to talk about it on this call for sales. I'm going to continue to talk about it in SEO and what that process looks like over there. But then we get into the fun stuff is the first one I have or the last two, but the first one, the last two is affiliates. So one of the things that we forget in that process is I want you guys to think outside the box and I'm not as versed as Sean is in real estate investing, but what I am versed in every business has an opportunity to make more money. That's like to, to find a way to partner with somebody or whatnot. In affiliate marketing, what I mean by that, take a step back and think about, and that's why it's so important to have that visual process. Look at each process and the goal, and maybe I'll be on the call next week because um, I want to kind of see what you guys come up with is what does the seller need? What does the buyer need? Because I know Chris C's on here, so he's a realtor. Uh, most of you guys are, are on the other side, like looking for sellers, right? But what do they need? Do they need a lawyer? Maybe in, in, in New York or Chicago, I can't remember exactly which, you know, what the laws are or whatever. Some cases you need lawyers. In other cases, you, you need you know, financing, right? You, you need the, the private money lenders. In other words, you got to think of everything that people need. And when you think about that is... Because most of the time we find ourselves saying, well, call this person or, you know, you got to go find them yourself, right? For me, you need a logo. I used to say, go to Fiverr. No longer. We built that in. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You find opportunities to be able to create it. So for every, for you guys, you're not going to know. I don't think some of you might know a little bit now, but I think you'll find more opportunities in some kind of affiliate opportunities or partnerships when you build that, that funnel. So that's one thing that I kind of want to challenge you guys 
to kind of see what's in that sales funnel and how many opportunities you can find of services that you can maybe find and partner up with to get some kind of money from that, right? So that's one thing. The other one does go back to partnerships, but not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to come in the form of a partnership. It can come in a form of a built-in service that you can offer, right? That's why my title is Solutions. Boom, Solutions. <laughs> so that's where I'm kind of heading here. It's, uh, I know real estate investing, you're looking for homes, you're going to, you know, whatever you're going to do, rehab or, or, or wholesale, whatever you're going to do there. But whether you're going to rehab or wholesale, there's services that need to be done in the process of doing that, right? The, the, I've seen these sales funds, they're so long and there's so many things in between that need to happen. So two things that I'm going to leave you with there, the, the two important things are going to be the affiliate partnerships um, and just the either service or partnerships that you can partner and own a piece of that company, right? That offers that service. And uh, those are things that always I'm trying to kind of figure out how to built in and, and kind of educate around on the SEO call. But on this call, it makes a ton of sense because you guys are literally building out the sales funnel, ideal. And then you're going to have an opportunity as part of your process to find those opportunities to make more money, right? So I want to kind of like open it up for, for questions, ideas, um, and kind of see if you guys maybe already have an idea and we can share um, that maybe some of us haven't thought about. So yeah, just go ahead and unmute and, and go for it. If you guys already are doing something or maybe having some ideas of aha moments of, hey, maybe this might work. So the, the beginning of our call before it was even recorded, that's my follow on because it has that immediate attachment of passive. So look into it on your own. And then, you know, let me know. I, I have additional links that I can send to you specifically, you know, because it's the, the, I'll call it a kickback, whatever. But uh, the opportunity is working with a homeowner who doesn't necessarily want to sell their house, but they'll, they're willing to sell it 10 to 15K above the market value. Let that sink in. 10 to 15K above market value over time. So you end up becoming a partner with the owner and it's a capital property. So they're the capital partner. You're either the finder or the facilitator, one or the other. And then multiple opportunities behind that with short-term rentals and stuff like that. So uh, it's, it's almost like a <clears throat> immediate passive income for that specific property. There you go, getting creative. Anybody else? Have some ideas that you're possibly working on, think about implementing or you're implementing right now. I know you guys do a bunch of uh, Airbnb, Marie. Do you guys do anything that you are doing, any type of affiliate partnership? We really don't on the Airbnb side at all. It's sad. I haven't taken advantage of affiliate marketing. And you, I mean, because you guys do a lot of different things within the business, Liz and Marie and your, your own. And there's, I mean, there's a ton, <laughs> you know that, I mean, I know. we even talked about the cleaning business, right? The Airbnb cleaning business. I mean, you have to have a cleaner. Why don't you partner up with somebody and have a kickback there or create it yourself, right? And own, you know, own a piece of the pie there. Um, but that's just kind of an example there. Um, but anything, uh, I'm trying to kind of dig deep in, inside the, the kind of like more of the, the seller process. What do they need? I mean, and what, what, what? do you guys go through that every time you have to recommend? Well, honestly, right now I've recommended like 17 people to my new CPA that I, that's helping us with the book. And I don't know how I haven't gotten a kickback. from him <laughs> That's exactly what I'm looking for. Simple. But, you know, the but he's helping me write the book and he's doing it for free. So I guess I'm getting his time, but it's amazing that I've, I mean, every time I have a meeting with him, his next meeting is with someone who I recommended him to. So. Hey, that's saving you at least 150 an hour, at least. I so know. there's your I kickback. Know. I know. John, you guys doing anything on your end for affiliate marketing? Any opportunity that you can see in your market that, you know, just through this conversation, like, oh man, I'm missing the boat on that. I mean, well, we're, we'll probably have some real estate people that when we're generating for market deals, um, that's always 
an option, right? Because we're sifting through so much data um, and kicking people up if they don't hit the motivated, you know, wholesale game or, or then also with certain flippers, right? We could partner in on with contractors or whatever. So there's all kinds of avenues I've already thought of. We just haven't got there yet. Yeah, gotta get I'll, some deal flow first <laughs> consistent deal flow sorry i was gonna say one more thing roger on the airbnb side so liz and i had gotten like actual affiliate links for like walmart and amazon associates kind of affiliates so that we could put all the products that we were um buying for the airbnbs and kind of start listing those in blogs and stuff so we've gone through the process and got you know affiliate links but we haven't really taken advantage of it so that's definitely something that we should probably look into and talk to about how we can put more of that stuff even on the website and take advantage of those kind of god that, that's actually perfect let's piggyback on that a little bit um one of the things that i had in my notes here to talk about that came up on on last week's call was adding your listings to your website, right? Bob, you went through the whole process. And one of the points that they stumped you on was, I think it was even John <laughs> that mentioned is like, you, you should add that property to the website, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but you can submit your properties over to support and we will add them. Even though it doesn't, the sections don't exist yet, we can add those sections uh, to have properties on your site. Now we can take that, we make them very simple um, in regards to adding those properties to the site, but then we can actually add more content to it. That's when you can say, hey, this is the property I'm selling, right? Wholesaling or whatever you're, you're doing with it. But from there, dry, you know, you have to control the conversation with some kind of affiliate partnerships that they got to go to wherever, right? So anything that is going to be an outside service, there should be some kind of re uh, uh, referral, but it should be an affiliate referral. It doesn't always have to be an official kind of affiliate link that links back that has a cookie. It can be a handshake type of affiliate partnership where it's like, hey, I'm sending you somebody over there and then you can follow up with them. I see a lot of that where that's where most of the big money actually comes from because that's you're dealing with, you know, one or two or three, you know, maybe per month or something like that. So it might be a handshake type of uh, affiliate uh, partnership that you have. But the other thing is adding value to build some of these, uh, get people to sign up or actually become interested in becoming an affiliate partner with you um, or even opting into your list, right? So I know um, Liz and Marie do this really well um, in regards to creating assets. So that's another thing that you can think of where the opportunity is, where you can actually create an asset and drive people through there um, to add more value because that's how you're going to be able to kind of keep people moving through that sales funnel as well. And I don't see that enough, right? It's like, um, cause it does take some work. Um, but that's another place as you're looking for opportunities to kind of build affiliate partnerships. Also things, where can I add more value? Things that you can create, whether you're recording a video and walking, walking someone through a piece of the process that gets left out quite a bit, I think, um, because some of these processes aren't very easy, right? So if you're, you're, you're kind of trying to have somebody I don't know, just I'm going to use an example. If they need to kind of look for an actual lawyer to go through the, your process to keep the ball moving, maybe you can have a page that get redirected to kind of give them some recommendations, but a video on that page, kind of walking them through the whole process, what that's going to look like, what to expect, what paperwork to get together. It's just another piece of, uh, uh, another asset within the website that gives value to the user, right? To keep them going. So just a couple ideas there, guys. Um, want to see if there's any um, any more thoughts or or kind of ideas around the affiliate partnership kind of topic or any of the pro, uh, the process stuff. You guys good? No, I do All have right. a question for you, though, yeah, related it. to content. Yes. Um, and putting that out on the website. So um, is it possible for me to actually share my screen real quick, Roger? Yeah, let me give you permission. All right. You should have permission now. Go for it. Okay. So I just created something on Canva. I'm going to show you guys. Can you see this? Yep. You can see it. Um, so I know that's actually really small. I think I 
Oh, wait, I can zoom in. Oh, that's too much zoom in. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Bear with me here. Okay. So we've been doing a lot of marketing to like for sale by owners. And of course they're like always overpriced. So um, I just wanted to pick your brain as far as like giving content, right? Like we wanted to maybe create a video for them to show them how like they can use Zillow to guess the home, their home price, but not by using the Zestimate, by actually using the filters and look at properties that recently sold um and giving them some kind of like rules right on how they should figure out the pricing for their home um so my question for you was i literally created this and i was like oh that's like a pretty good image should i just email it to support and have them put it on the website should i create a blog around it should i create the video explain everything like what do you think once you have an idea and you come up with this content and this extra information um, what's the best way to really go about getting it out there and utilizing it? Perfect. That's actually a great question. Go ahead, Bob, before I kind of get into my rant here, go for it. I, I, the only thing out of all is fantastic. The only thing I wouldn't, I would not use is specifically saying, don't use Zestimate because they will come back on you on force with like some type yes, of I'm, decent I might get sued. Exactly. <laughs> That's the only yeah. thing I got. The rest of it looks fantastic. Uh, and right. just finding just uh marie just finding kind of a different way to say that or you know in general right and then when you go through your training you can show kind of like how that that process works but kind of breaking out in general marie pretty much came up with with the concept right a, a, an idea which is awesome what does that look like in regards to digital marketing how you can do it and fit it into your sales process to kind of drive more attention and more more traffic number one marie you, you'd create the ultimate guide whatever your your concept is you're going to create a blog post and it's going to be the ultimate guide to that process that's going to be step one right we got to come up with a catchy uh title and if we can find a keyword to replace whatever the title is but we're not going to really know that to kind of get some ideas and that's perfect for thursday's seo call bring that so we can kind of play around with some things that we can like use uh Ahrefs, which is my seo tool that i love to use we pop it in, kind of see if there's any type of keywords that we can, you know, use as a title. Um, so that's number one, your blog and make it the ultimate guide. Now, how we're going to promote this thing and really get it out there. Number one, SEO is going to hopefully can take care of some of that, right? But number two is going to be, you're going to create the video on YouTube. We're going to use that same title, that optimized title. And then we're going to create a description about 500 words or so. And we're going to link back to the blog post, right? So that's how we're going to get a backlink and some traffic from YouTube. Um, you're going to take that video and I know this is a lot, but it's recorded. So I'm kind of walking you through this whole process. You're going to embed that video on the blog post you create for the ultimate guide. So that's going to count as an embed. That's going to count as a pretty much a ch check of the box, right? Of media on a page on a blog, giving it Google loves that. And then you're, we're going to chop that blog post up into like five. I don't know. Cause I looked at all the different steps that you had on there. I, I kind of glanced at it but we can probably chop that up into a couple, we'll call it a couple uh, Google business profile posts just to kind of get the momentum going. Is that gonna drive direct traffic? No, that's gonna drive attention from Google, basically the algorithm pings, right? Cause you have content out there. And what we're gonna do on each one of those posts, we're on the, on the call to action button, we're gonna link it back, not just to the blog post. So that's why I said a couple, maybe it's four or five pieces that we chop it up. Some of them will go to the blog post, some of them will go to the YouTube channel, to the actual video. So that way you're, you're kind of creating that whole kind of like matrix around that concept and you you're own creating it. Creating the right? infinite loop. Yes. <laughs> you, Which, you know, that is the, totally wrong, guy, but I just caught it. Mark. Just off of your explanation, it just freaking clicked. It's the infinite loop. So yes. no matter where they go, they're constantly clicking something that's going to circle them back to one or the other. Exactly. And now there's two more. I mean, if you stop there, you're winning. You're going to kind of, you're going to be able to promote that piece of content quite well. You're going to rank quite well for it. If we optimize it correctly with the, with the keyword that's out there that has search, right? But to even push it even further, there's two more steps. Step four would be a press release, right? We shoot a press release and in the press release, we can embed the video. We can embed a picture from one of your Google posts. We can actually embed that boom and use that as a featured image. 
we can then link multiple to multiple assets, meaning we're going to link to the blog post from the press release, and we're going to link to the YouTube uh, video, right? And then that press release is going to push like, I don't know, between 30 to 100 links over to all these assets, continuing the infinite loop that Bob's talking about. Okay. Now you can put the cherry on top by just going out on social media and sharing the crap out of it. <laughs> That's basically the, the, the last part. And obviously, you, you know this part pretty, pretty uh, good on social media. You can chop this up as much as you want. Those videos, um, we do it all the time with our podcast. You can take your whatever you create, little snippets of it, and just continue putting it out there. Just continues to amplify that, that concept. And that way, if somebody goes to that or you, you mention it on your podcast or you mention it on a call and somebody goes out there, it's just going to gain momentum. This is a game momentum. You're going to really, really get that concept out there. And now you become the expert um, around that concept. And as your affiliate in Tampa, we can connect your page to my page. And then we have surrogates moving in different locations. And that way your blog can facilitate my inactivity. <laughs> yes, that's next level. You're actually already, you're already in my head, Bob. We're getting some of our clients up to like in the 20s and 30s in their authority with their websites. And eventually, because we're getting into our third year in business. So once I have, I don't know, like 50 to 60 of our clients with, with really strong authority websites, we're going to interlink our entire network <laughs> and uh, really kind of push everybody so everybody can benefit from it. But it takes time. It takes a couple of years uh, to get there. But we're all getting there. Um, but hopefully that helps out, Marie. That's like more of a SEO kind of <laughs> direction, but also helps out your sales funnel. Perfect. Thank you. Good. All right, guys. I think we're heading towards the end of the hour here. Just want to see if there's any final thoughts from anybody. Thank you for letting me participate. And I like watching you get your geek on. Yeah. <laughs> right on, man. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here. Uh, recording. Uh,